The Noisy Paint Box, written by Barb Rosenstock and illustrated by Mary Grand Prix. Vasya Kandinsky spent his days learning to be a proper Russian boy. He studied bookfuls of math, science, and history. He practiced piano scales to the marching click of the metronome. He sat stiff and straight at dressed up dinners while the grown ups talked and talked and talked. Vasya's well off world was perfectly polite until the day his aunt gave him a small wooden paint box. Every proper Russian boy should appreciate art, said Auntie. She showed Vasya the correct way to mix colors on the paint box palette. Vasya mixed red with yellow, then he mixed red with blue. As the colors changed, Vasya heard a whisper. Yes. Louder. Yes. Then louder still. Hiss. What's that sound? asked Vasya. I don't hear a thing, said Auntie. Vasya listened as his brush stirred and swished. The swirling colors trilled like an orchestra tuning up for a ma magical symphony. Mama, Papa, called Vasya. What a noisy paint box. Silly, Vasily, said Papa. Stop being foolish, said Mama. Vasya painted the sound of the colors. He spun a bright lemon circle onto the canvas. It clinked like the highest notes on the keyboard. He brushed a powerful navy rectangle that vibrated deeply like the lowest cello strings. He tossed up jag swashes of blaring crimson and added cheerful dots of blurbing green, clanging orange, and tinkling violet. Vasya painted and painted until the colors went quiet. Look what I made, shouted Vasya. Is it a house, said his auntie. Is it a flower, asked his mama. What is it supposed to be, asked Papa. It's music, said Vasya, watching his painting around the house. Calm down, said Mama. Do some math, said Papa. Heaven, said auntie. This boy needs a proper art class. So Vasya went to art class and learned to draw houses and flowers, just like everybody else. As the years passed, Vasya finished school and studied to be a lawyer. He ignored his noisy paint box and lived the way people expected. But Vasya couldn't ignore the sounds of the colors singing to him in the streets of Moscow. The canary-colored mailbox whistling as he rode to work. The scarlet sunset hazing, ringing above the ancient Kremlin walls. An ivory course of snowflakes scattered on the sable collar of his overcoat. One evening, one evening suitably steamed and starched, Vasily attended the opera. As the orchestra's music crashed around him, the colors of the noisy paint box twirled wildly in his mind. Stomping lines of vermilion and coral, caroling triangles and pistachio and garnet, thundering arches of aqua and ebony with shrill points of cobalt and saffron. Basia heard the colors singing. Basia saw the music dancing. And Vasya was never quite as proper again. 
He quit his job teaching law and moved to Mos from Moscow to Munich to be a painter. He studied with this famous teacher and then that one. Is it a house? Is it a flower? What is it supposed to be? His teachers asked. Vasya wanted to paint the colors he heard and maybe the famous teachers knew best. Once again, Vasya put houses and flowers, animals and people into his paintings, just like everyone expected. The teachers were happy, Vasya was not. His artist friends understood. They too were tired of painting pretty landscapes and pretty ladies. They thought art needed to change. Art should make you feel, Vasya told them, like music. Exactly, said one of his friends, but none of them knew how to paint feelings. Until one day, Vasya grew brave enough and invited the world to see his paintings roaring from his noisy paint box. Hiss, rattle, whistle, bash, murmur, zip, clang. Snapping surly in points, crunching crimson squares, whispering charcoal lines. Vasya named these paintings after music he loved. Improvisation, composition, accompaniment, fake movement, and simply three sounds. With his noisy painting box, Vasya Kandinsky created something entirely new, abstract art. It took a long time for people to understand. Is it a house? Is it a flower? What's it supposed to be? It's my art, Vasya answered. How does it make you feel?